Okay, we're back and we're doing some electrostatics. <coughs> in this case, uh, we're looking at point charge problems. Um, generally, the, the two things, the two quantities that all charges we believe in the universe create all around them are electric fields and electric potentials, or, or voltage, as we like to call it. Um, whether it's a single electron, whether it's a big ball of charge, a balloon, um, a Van de Graaff electrostatic generator, it doesn't matter. They're producing fields and potentials. The fields are more obvious, of course, because those you can you can feel the hair on your arm stand up. You can see the effects of the field. Potentials are a little trickier. Uh, another big difference is the fact that potential mathematically is a scalar. These are just numbers. And so it's actually easier to work with potentials on the math side, even though it's a more abstract idea. Uh, electric fields, well, what can we say? We have a vector problem, so <laughs> you can't get away from it. So I just want to do a quick little um, example here where you have some fixed charges. There's four charges sitting here. And a couple positives, a couple negatives. And we're just trying to figure out what's the total electric potential at the origin and how strong is the resultant electric field at the origin. So the, the setup for, for potential is really not so bad. In fact, I'll just put it right here. And it's just going to be the sum of the individual voltages that each of the four charges is producing. So we're going to have four terms here. Now, if each of these little ticks on the graph is one meter, uh, we can go ahead and, and find this pretty easily. Keep in mind that in order to find the electric potential from a point charge, we're dealing with kq over r. So we're just going to add all these up. It's also important to remember that when you're talking about the scalars, when you talk about potential or voltage, or energies for that matter, the signs of the charges are important. Positives produce positive voltage, negative charges produce negative voltage. So we have to keep those signs in our calculation. So if we just go ahead and do this, um, we see that for that negative 3q up in the top left, we're going to have our electric constant times negative 3q. And that distance from the charge down to the origin, uh, let's see, if, if we use Pythagorean's theorem, it's 2 and 2, so that's going to be over root 8. And then we have to add to that, uh, we have another negative charge, so we're going to have our constant times negative 4q, and that's all going to be over root 2, okay, that distance to the origin. And then we're going to have a couple positive terms. We're going to have our constant times 3q. Uh, that distance is going to be root 5. And then we've got the, the 5q also positive, so we just add it, uh, which is 2 meters away. And if we knew what the Q was, we could plug that in. Um, our K value, in case you don't remember, is 9 times 10 to the 9th. And technically it's Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Okay, so it's a big number. So typically th these you know, voltages turn out to be sizable. Um, the other thing to keep in, in mind is uh, we, we could change this problem slightly and say, let's say you, you put a little test charge, okay, a little Q at the origin, how much energy, how much potential energy would it have? So if we know the voltage, we could just multiply it by the charge that we place at the origin, and that would tell you how much energy that charge would have, how much energy you have in the system, basically. That, that energy could be positive or negative, depending on, on the numbers. Okay, so that, that's potential. Electric field, yeah, there's our vector problem. So the way we, we go about any vector problem is you think of your chart. And so let me just set that up real quickly. We're going to have x pieces and we're going to have y pieces. And again, I'll, I'll always encourage you to, to set up this chart, no matter how good you are at doing vectors. It just helps you see the problem better. It, it helps you keep things in order. And if you do make a mistake, it, it makes identifying that mistake much easier. Everything's organized. Okay, now 
we have to deal with the direction. So keep in mind that, uh, for example, if you have that plus 5 Q down at, at the bottom here, uh, if we're looking at the field that it produces at the origin, directly above it, we have um, this idea that for positive charges, electric fields shoot out of it in all directions. So if you're above a positive charge, you'd see a vector going up like that. The strength of the electric field is kq over r squared. Okay, so for the 5q, um, there is no uh, x component, but we do have a positive y component. Let the picture tell you which way the vector points. So uh, in this case, the direction is going to be positive or up. It's going to have a magnitude of, of our constant times 5q all over that distance squared, which would be 2 meters squared. Uh, for the 3q, Now in this case, um, if we think of that line from the charge to the origin, again, it's a positive charge that's shooting a field out of it. You'd see a positive field in that direction. It's going to have both x and y components. Notice from the picture, the x component is going to be negative. It's pointing to the left. So to find that component, you have the total strength, k times 3q, and that's all of over root 5 squared. But now we have to think of this triangle here. We have to imagine what, what this angle is right here to pick out the x component. We need the cosine of that angle, so that cosine is, is going to be, looking at our, our geometry there, 2 over root 5. That's the x component. The y component uh, is going to be positive. It's pointing up. So k times 3q all over root 5 squared is the total strength. And now we have to pick out the y component, or the sine of that angle, which from our triangle is going to be 1 over root 5. Okay. Now let's just uh, add into our list the, the two negative charges. Um, maybe let, let's look at that negative 3q up there on the top left. Negative charges have electric fields going into them. So if, if, you're, um, if you're to the bottom right <laughs> of a negative charge, you're going to see a field along that line going something like that. So even though it's a negative charge, it's, it's going to have a negative x component but a positive y component. Okay, so again, let the picture tell you. Don't worry about the sign in the calculation. The direction is going to be negative in the x direction, so we have k times 3q. Uh, let's see, now that distance was root 8 squared. And in this case, it's a 45 degree angle, so that, that'll work out okay. If we look at our triangle, it, it's going to be um, 2 over root 2. Forgive me there, 2 over root 8, sorry. <laughs> and let's see, uh, it's a positive y component because it's pointing up. And so you'll have exactly the same magnitude there because it's a 45 degree angle. Last but not least, just to for completeness, we've got that negative 4q. And looking at the picture, um, its electric field is going up towards it. So even though it's a negative charge, it's going to have a positive x and positive y. So let the picture tell you the direction. Uh, that distance is root 2. And now that's also going to be a 45 degree angle, so we're going to have 1 over root 2 for the, the cosine. The y component points up, so it's a positive direction. And we'll have the sine of 45 degrees, which is 1 over root 2. Okay? So the picture tells us the direction. That's the important part for the vectors. 
Uh, you'd finish this off like you always do for a vector problem. You'd, you'd find your your total x and you'd find your total y. I have no idea what those numbers are going to be since we don't know what q is. And those would be either positive or negative numbers. Um, let's assume, just for kicks, that uh, well, the y is going to be positive and yeah, who knows what the x will be. <laughs> um, but with, with your totals, you'd, you'd make a right triangle with those. Uh, so we know we're going to have a, a positive y. Let's say just for sake of argument, it turns out to be a negative x number. So those would give you two perpendicular vectors. We would use that to draw a triangle. And that diagonal, that hypotenuse right there, that's what we're after. That's our resultant field. We could find its strength, we could find its, its direction, and life would be good. Notice that if you put a, a charge at the origin, we could very quickly take that electric field that we just found, multiply it by that charge, and boom, that would be the force acting on the charge. Okay, so it gets messy in a hurry. Um, Fields are tougher to work with because they're vectors. You have to do all this nonsense. Voltages are pretty easy to work with. They're just numbers that you add up. And yeah, in the end, um, we can figure out everything about what happens with that system of charges. So I hope that helps. And until next time, we'll see you later.